Tonight I want to talk about maintenance on the Craftsman 3000 PSI pressure washer. This has the Briggs & Stratton CR950 engine. I bought this pressure washer about three months ago and I did a review on it and I've had a lot of feedback from the video, mostly from comments and email, people asking questions about the oil. People want to know what sort of oil does it take, uh, how much oil does it take, how do you check your oil, should you ever change your oil. Um, we're also going to talk tonight about pump saver, why it's necessary to use pump saver. I'm going to talk about gasoline and tell you really what my opinion is on the type of gas you should use. I'm going to show you how to check and change your air filter. And I'm also going to discuss pressure adjustment. A lot of people run these machines on full blast all the time and that's really a bad idea, especially if you're going to wash vehicles. So first let's talk about overfilling and why you should not overfill oil and then we're going to do an oil change and uh, let's get started. Before I change the oil, I want to show you why you should never overfill your engine. Here's some oil that I put in a blender and blended it up because I want to show you what happens if you put too much oil in. You see how this oil has bubbles in it? It looks milky like a milkshake. Well, if you get that milkshake in your engine, what's going to happen is all the parts in your engine that spin around that should be coated in oil are going to be coated in frothy oil instead. And the air bubbles are going to stop the oil from lubricating properly. Here's what the oil in your engine should look like. Now this is not the oil I'm going to use, I'm just using this for an example. This, your oil should be very clear. Let's see if I can get up closer and get you a good picture. Your oil should be super clear, just like that. Very nice consistency. That's what the oil should look like when you put it in your engine and when you drain it out it should also look like that. It's only going to be darker because it's going to be used oil, it's going to be dirty. On this pressure washer there are two places you can drain the oil. One is right there. And on the other side, I know it's sort of dark here, there's another plug identical to it right there. Likewise, there's an oil cap on that side, and there's another oil cap on this side, and this is where you put the oil in. Okay, now it's time to actually drain the oil. So I use a funnel, you can buy one like this for a couple of bucks at any hardware store. And I've got a bowl that I keep in my shop. I usually keep both these in a big Ziploc bag because they usually have oil on them. So I prop up one side of the pressure washer and the end of this funnel, I tuck it right up under the bolt while I um, unscrew the bolt with a 10 millimeter wrench. And then I put the bowl down below the funnel. So just like this. Let's see if I can do this without spilling a lot of oil. And this is easier to do if you have two people, but I'm, I'm always just me doing it, so. And you know you always spill some oil. It's going to happen. There's, there's no way around it. This is a terrible design, the way that you drain the oil out of this pressure washer. Sometimes I wonder what designers are thinking when they make machines for the consumer market. There. So now you see it's coming right out. And there's a little bit of oil draining down there. You can't avoid it. It always happens. As long as most of the oil goes in this bowl, I'm okay. I always keep some paper towel out here. I usually keep two or three rolls of paper towel in the shop to put underneath there. And I usually keep a piece of cardboard, or at least an, a large cardboard box in the shop also, just for oil changes so that I don't get oil on the floor and on my plywood, on you know, whatever surface I'm using to change the oil. Okay, now that all the oil is drained out, I'm going to set my funnel on the paper towel. I'm going to put the oil bolt back in. And when you put this in, do not over tighten it. It's easy to tighten down too hard and the next time you try and get it off, it'll be stuck on there. Put your wrench on and just snug it up and that's good enough. Now, here's this dirty oil that came out of it. You can see how dirty this oil is and this oil is only about a month old. Now that is the original oil that came with it. I actually had two bottles of this, so this is the second bottle I've used. 
I don't recommend using that oil. What I like is a um, 5W30 Castrol. Does a really good job. And when I change this in a couple of months, with the same amount of usage, it will not nearly be as dirty as this is. So let's uh, refill it now and uh, get this mess cleaned up. Now let's refill this guy with oil. Take the cap off. This cap is also your oil fill stick and I'll clean it good because we're going to have to use it to tell when, it, when we're full of oil. All right. Take our funnel and put it in here. Open my nice new Kestrel. All right. Now, this uh, pressure washer takes 18 ounces. What I do is I usually fill it a little bit and check as I go. So this is a, uh, this is one quart, okay? So we're not gonna use nearly all of this. So we're gonna put some in. Now notice, uh, let me see if I can get you up closer where you can see this. Notice how clean, nice looking this oil is. Okay, here's the pump saver I use. This is um, Power Care. I bought this at Home Depot. I think it's about 10 bucks for this bottle. And pump saver lubricates the internal parts of your, uh, your impeller, the piston, and all the moving parts inside your pump. Your pump is just like the engine in your car. It takes some lubrication, and it comes lubricated from the factory, but it, to make it last for a while, um, especially if you have hard water, you need to use a pump saver. So here's how this works. This black cap is just a seal. Inside there you've got a little, um, uh, another little seal. So you plug this in where your hose goes. Normally your garden hose would go right here. So what you wanna do is push your uh, pump saver in there. Tighten it down, not really tight. Just make a snug seal. And then let's see if you can see this. You squeeze it until you see the pump saver come out of the top opening. So that didn't take long. Let's do it again. See the green liquid come out? Pump saver's green. Squeeze it three or four times, all right? Then you take it off and you pull your cord on your pressure washer one time to cycle it. You don't wanna crank it, so I've got the pressure washer turned off. I'm going to give it two pulls, all right? So now you screw your pump saver in again. And you squeeze it again, and you don't have to squeeze it really hard. You just squeeze it enough to push the, the lubricant through the system. See it coming out, and don't get too worried about wasting it. And also, the pump saver is non-toxic according to the label on the bottle. So you don't have to worry about it killing your plants or hopefully killing your animals. But you don't want to spill this and leave it somewhere that a dog could drink it. So just be careful about that. Also, this black plastic uh, piece does not seal this. There's no way to seal it. They don't give you a sealable cap with it. So that just sort of slides on. So when you store this, store it somewhere that it's not going to turn over on a shelf. Um, you know, like I said earlier, you can buy multiple versions of this. I like this one because it's a bit thinner than the one that uh, they actually sell. Briggs & Stratton sells one to go with this. Pressure washer. 
This one is a bit thinner. I like it better. Um, I've had good, good success with it. Well, none of my pressure washers have ever broke down, so I guess that's successful. All right, let's plug up the uh, pressure hose. Okay, let me show you something about pump saver. Um, this happens every time I put pump saver in my unit. This is the detergent reservoir. There's a, underneath there, I don't know if you can see that, there's a uh, rubber tube that runs up here to the uh, outlet or to the, to the part where your pressure hose plugs on. Every time I put pump saver in, I have water when I first pressurize the system that comes out of there through that hose into the detergent container. And you see out there how it's overflowing? It actually comes out. And that happens until I run the unit for about 15 minutes and then it stops. So I think the extra lubrication the pump saver puts in the pump, at least in this, this small section of the pump, allows water to come back out of that valve. But uh, that usually stops after I run it for a few minutes. I've got gasoline, I've already checked that. Okay, so it cranked up first try. Also, it sounds pretty good, so I know my oil is okay. So notice now that I've done that, um, water is no longer coming out of the water reservoir. And that always happens. I don't know why that why it does that. I've researched it, tried to find out, but it always happens. Also, every time you turn it off, make sure you turn off your gas. In fact, let me show you something. I'm gonna crank it again and show you something. walk away from it so I actually turned off the gas this is the way I like to turn off my pressure washer I turn off my gas supply and I let it run until all the gas is out of the line and uh, that way if you if you're not going to use it for the next four or five months you know that there's no gas in the uh, carburetor and, and your system is not going to gel up with old gas and you can hear it sputter and it may take up to about a minute and a half two minutes to run all the gas out but once it runs the gas out, it'll die. Okay, so that took about uh, right at two minutes and then it finally died. Okay, so my gas is off, choke is off. Uh, let's turn my switch off. So now let's talk about pressure adjustment. Okay, you see this thing right here? This is a knob you can turn that um, controls the pressure that the pump puts out. So you turn it uh, counterclockwise and the pressure goes down. You turn it clockwise and the pressure goes up. So I'm going to crank it up and demonstrate this to you while I spray the pressure washer right through here so you can see it. So let's crank it up. the lowest pressure and I've got the yellow tip on which is a high pressure tip. Now I'm going to turn it clockwise to turn up the pressure. Alright, that's maximum pressure. So now let's take a look at the air intake and how to clean your air filter and talk about exactly what that does. Okay, your air filter for your engine is underneath here. So you turn this knob on top, this, uh, this little thing here, counterclockwise, to take it off. Take the knob off, that lifts right up. So there's your air filter. And it's got this wing nut you can take off. Now you see my air filter's clean. I've, cha I've already um, changed it once over the summer. But I never spray 
in grass or straw or out in the yard or anything like that, I always spray on concrete. You see how clean it is? Now this will get dirty and you can see there's a little bit of oil in it and that's, that's normal. That's nothing to be concerned about. But if this gets dirty, what you can do is take it off. You can actually clean it in gasoline, which I don't recommend. I recommend you just replace it. But if you look inside there, you can see there's something like a HEPA filter down inside of it. But um, you can actually clean this. You can actually pull the sponge off this if you're really careful, and that way you expose the HEPA filter. You take the sponge and you put the sponge in gasoline, you shake it around really good, and then you let it dry. Don't put it on there with gasoline still in it. Let, this, let the sponge sit in the sun and dry for an hour or so to get really dry before you put it back on here. And make sure this surface here is clean too. It's normal, normal for this to be a little bit dirty, but you shouldn't have any trash built up in there. So you put that on, push it down good, put your wing nut back on. And you want to check this, I don't know, every, um, every two or three times you use your pressure washer, check your air filter. Because whatever goes through your air filter goes into your engine. So you just want to be careful about that. Make sure you're, you know, you try and take care of it. You might be asking, how does air even get in there? Well, there's gaps down in the bottom of this housing. Come on, get on there. All right, so put that back on. I'm going to show you one more thing that I forgot to mention earlier. If you're having trouble running it and you suspect that you may have a spark plug problem, there's your spark plug. Let's see if I can get a good picture. Your spark plug is right there. I'm not going to touch it because I've been running this for about five minutes. It's hot. Your spark plug's right there. Um, you very rarely have to touch your spark plug. In fact, of the last three or four pressure washers I owned, I've never changed the spark plug. So. If you think you have a problem, check everything else before you check your spark plug. Now, last thing I want to talk about is the gasoline that you can put in this device. Um, I recommend you only run non-ethanol gas. And the reason is I have a lot of machines at the farm and here at the house, like mowers, pressure washers, other things. Um, I've noticed that the uh, ethanol-based gas will gel up, especially if you let it sit over the winter or you let it sit for three or four months at a time. And I've had to clean out, um, here's my four wheelers right here. I got a couple of four wheelers. I've had to uh, clean carburetors on my four wheelers before um, because gasoline gelled up over a four or five month period during the winter. And I hate having to clean carburetors. It's a real pain, it's expensive. Um, carburetor rebuild kits are expensive. I just don't wanna be bothered with all that. So I recommend you run non-ethanol gas. Okay, here's your uh, science lesson to go along with this video. A viewer asked me a couple of weeks ago um, what sort of acid that I recommend he put on his concrete to get rid of oil. So let's talk about that. Um, you should use soap or detergent on your oil and not acid. So the soap molecule has a hydrophobic end and it hydro has a hydrophilic end. It's an oblong molecule. So here's how this works. Let's say that this piece of plywood is your driveway. And on your driveway, you've got some oil. That's what this circle is right here, okay? You put some water on your oil, and then you put soap or detergent down on it. And then the hydrophobic end of the soap molecule will bond to the oil. That's what these dark spots are right there. And the hydrophilic end points away. So what happens is, um, the oil solidifies with the soap and then you can wash it away. So you use soap or detergent to get rid of oil. Don't use acid. Since we're talking about cleaners and acid, let's take a quick look at this. This is the pH scale. It goes from 1, which is acidic, all the way up to 14. And the pH scale, pH means potential of hydrogen. Um, so on the low end, we've got different types of acids like lemon juice, gastric acid, we have muriatic acid. Uh, CLR, rust and lime remover, which are both very acidic, will burn you very bad. On the other end, we have our cleaners. We have bleach, uh, Lysol cleaner, Dawn, those are all up in this area, up around the 11, 12, 13 area. So 
On this end you have cleaners, on this end you have acid. And those two don't do the same thing, okay? So if you're gonna remove oil from a surface, you want a cleaner that's alkaline or basic. You don't wanna use acid. And by the way, never, ever, ever mix bleach with an acid. You're gonna uh, formulate something which will uh, burn your lungs. So just uh, be careful if you're handling these acids.